length behind him. Five still on your door. Getting help from the eight. Still there, five. Half a car went between you. Eight's right on him with a car length and a half behind the eight. Half to the two. Spotter chatter. It's like air traffic control. But the driver's got to drive that car. Well, by theory, they steer the car. I think that I feel like the spotters drive the cars anymore. They're the ones seeing what lanes are building that energy and getting momentum. And then they're relaying that to the drivers. So they're really calling the shots. Did you see how big a push Kyle Busch gave Kyle Larson? Really shot him out so far that Kyle had to elect to go down. Now what's he do here, Tony? Does he pull up, make this block, or stay on the bottom? I think he just sits there and figures out which line is building energy, and then you, you choose that. He didn't do it there. He thought about it. He pulled back down. I don't think he liked the way Kyle Busch was pushing it that aggressive. Kyle's going to try. Larson is going to try to stay as clean as he can here, but try to keep this track position as long as he can. If he loses it, I, I'd say he goes to the back. But if he stays up front, I bet he tries to stay there. A lot of pushing. 20 cars in that draft. E.J. McLeod got back out on track, but he's half a lap down. I do think this is a scenario with Kyle Larson where the reason he's staying there is he wants to gather as much information as he can, but he doesn't want to do it with a lot of risk. If his car didn't feel good, he wouldn't stay there. He wouldn't elect to put himself in that position. But as long as that car feels and drives the way he wants it to, 